Привет, друзья! Привет, привет! Мы в Индии. Когда-то с Сергеем услышали, что предприниматели – это агенты Бога. Им даются деньги, чтобы они их перераспределяли и приумножали. Важно понимать, что есть мышление там, простых людей, есть люди, которые делают экстраординарные результаты, а есть люди, которые делают гиперэкстраординарные результаты. То есть есть там долларовые миллионеры, мультимиллионеры, а есть миллиардеры. Вот давайте посмотрим, как они мыслят. Ну, я считаю, что такие люди, они должны рассказывать о себе, о своем бизнесе не для того, чтобы показать, какие они хорошие, а для того, чтобы быть примером, показывать, как нужно жить, чтобы мыслить глобально, делать глобальные проекты. Guys, we want to introduce you Abdul Rafik, yeah. Hi. the youngest yeah. brother yeah. brother of uh, Raja family, yeah. and we are on the the uh, entrance of the Raja house. Raja house. Uh, the name of the house is Raja Manzil. Raja Manzil. Manzil. Yeah. Here you was born. Yeah. In, yeah. Yeah. And here your father was. Yeah. He was uh, always here actually. Yeah. And he used to go to Sri Lanka also at times. Okay. But the major activities in India, he used to operate from here. Nice. Yeah. Let's go and show yeah. you your yeah. room where okay. you was. Uh... Yeah. yeah, yeah. The old, old house was here, and then now it's broken down and we built a new house. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. We wanted to leave it as a traditional house, but then the house was, you know, coming down. It was uh -huh. sinking. Uh, it was made in the year 1935. <laughs> so you know, uh, it has become old, and then we had to break it down. But it was the same, or? Uh, yeah, almost the di dimensions are almost the same. Uh -huh. Nice. In fact, when we broke the house. Uh, Uh, we wanted to move the house a little more back, uh -huh. but we have some traditional people called the carpenters here. They come and see uh, how to, you know, where to locate the house. And finally, what happened was uh, he told, "No, we don't go back. We come forward." Uh -huh. And now it's in the same place where the old house was, uh -huh. in the same location. Could you tell us about the history of your family, like uh, where it started? We are actually uh, six brothers and um, uh, five sisters. Uh, so now that's how I'm the youngest and uh, you know, normally everybody moves out you know, of the house. The elder one uh, has made a house, so like that everybody has got a house. And finally I was the last one, so I had to be here. Even now we follow certain systems like uh, on Fridays, after we're going to the mosque, we have uh, lunch here. When, the, when the, did your uh, dad start uh, business? He started business in the year uh, 1928. In Sri Lanka? Yeah, in Sri Lanka. Uh -huh. And then he started, you know, the flourishing came after 1935. Nice. And uh, why he decided to make a business? Uh, he was working on corporation before or that he, if you want no, to have he, a... he was just a tailor in the beginning. Uh -huh. He was just a tailor in the beginning. And then later on, you know, he Taylor started was dress? dress. Yeah, yeah. Then later on, he started uh, making uh, dealing with BD leaves. Uh -huh. That's a raw material for BD leaves. Uh -huh. And then after that, uh, he started doing business with tobacco, and then finally started rolling BDs. Uh -huh. So he used to keep a clock and then roll BDs and increase the speed. Who is correct? Yeah, who's going faster? So that way he started, and then he went to move on to Sri Lanka. Uh -huh. From and India. Then, yeah, from India. And then from Sri Lanka, he started doing very well. Uh -huh. And then he had many other businesses there in, uh, in Sri Lanka called the Litho Press. He used to make toffees and different other, uh, you know, uh, products. Mm. But then BDs were his passion and he was doing it in a big way. Mm. Then when he came to Kerala, he started, you know, uh, in Kerala also. We started rolling BDs in Kerala and Tirunelveli. Just wanted to show you, you know, the um, uh, old house, picture of the old house. That's, that's the picture of the old house. This, this one, this room. So here you can see the old uh, house which was broken down. Uh, it's got uh, almost the same kind of uh, you know, design. Mm. For example, now this room is located here. This is also just uh, one of our uh, photographs of my father. Here, uh, what I wanted to say is that, you know, uh, this is a photograph in Sri Lanka. And this is our manager, Mr. Sebastian. So, and this know, is I father. I just want to say, my father is standing here and he's on top of the bonnet. <laughs> so, so yeah. manager is higher, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, more, more privileged <laughs> yeah, place yeah, more than privileged, the father. Yeah, yeah. So this is a philosophy that, uh, family, yeah. like, uh, so you're the, you have a flat hierarchy. Yes. And right. now it's, uh, it's yeah. the same. Yeah. 
Ребят, мы приехали на производство чая. Этот чай пьют миллионы людей по всей Индии. Давайте посмотрим, как он выглядит, что они делают, о чем этот чай. И знакомим вас с членом семьи. Это Зухин. Hey. портфолио Раджа Групп, бизнес по чаю занимает примерно 2%. SRD и SRD. Прикольно. Они гордиты больше, чем Липтон и прочие другие зарубежные бренды. В общем, есть человек, его специально тренировали, чтобы различать вкусы чаев. Они из разных заводов, фабрик, они их пробуют и решают, покупать или не покупать. То есть это вот просто сэмплы тестовые. Они пробуют и говорят, да, этот чай хороший, покупаем дальше. Сейчас пойму, есть разница между ними. Which of them are very different? This and this. This is SRP, this one, SRD. These uh -huh. two different grades. Uh, what, which is higher? Which is up? Let me, let, uh, let me try and then uh, yeah, say which try, is more you expensive. Can you, you can try. <laughs> and Directly. then I will try this. Okay? Yeah. You have to? And then? Yes. One thousand, one hundred thousand kilos a month. Сто тысяч. Сто тысяч килограмм в месяц подают чая. А если предположить, что хотя бы килограмм стоит сколько там? 10 баксов. То есть миллион долларов. Ну, говорит, 2% занимает. Меня впечатлило, что ребята продают дешевый чай. Я его вкус не мог отличить друг от друга. Но они так заморачиваются тем, чтобы выбрать правильно, и оно было, чтобы единого качества и вкуса. Для них это деньги, потому что люди, они, оказывается, чувствуют, те, кто реально любит чай, не чувствуют. Получается, что никогда нельзя пренебрегать тем, что любит клиент. Если он любит конкретный стандартный вкус, нужно, чтобы продукт был всегда стандартный, и они вот вкладываются так. Это вот, чтобы решить, какую из них покупать, у них четыре человека и отдельная комната, и они тестируют каждый раз чая для новой поставки. Когда у тебя покупают миллионы людей, вот он сегодня пьет чай, да, он пьет его месяц уже, и если вот он через месяц попробовал тот же самый чай, и он другого вкуса, человек начинает раздражаться, съеживаться, как бы ему это не нравится, ему кажется, его обманули. Поэтому очень важно, чтобы вкус был одинаковый. И качество тоже, потому что качество и вкус – это достаточно связанные вещи. И ну, когда ты очень большой, тебе очень важно, чтобы был единый стандарт всей твоей продукции. So here we are in Raja Charitable Fund and this uh, family and all the Raja group is famous for their karmic approach to the business. So they build hospitals where people can get free medicine, uh, they build special places where you can get uh, fed for free. So they believe that uh, if you do something for people, if you give, you will get in return anyway. A charitable hospital and uh, it was uh, started in 1882 by only one employee. Yeah? And this employee was you, yeah. 35 years ago. Yeah. 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 Raja Group were doing all the business and they were all uh, uh, giving uh, help to all, uh, all the people by way of so many things. But they didn't have any medical help so far. So they thought of a medical uh, institution. So they were, to start with, we were a little uh, apprehensive because we do not know how, how, how far it will succeed. So they advertised and I saw the advertisement and I thought I'll. So I, I was a 10-year uh, uh, experienced uh, MBBS. Then I took my MD. So uh, I thought the, uh, the first appointment, I thought I'll join with these people because they are nearer to God. Uh -huh. So I joined this institution in 1982 with a small room. Uh -huh. Uh, we only supervised uh, uh, what all things we should have and all. It was only a room with a waiting room, with a pharmacy nearby, uh, and a lab, and an ambulance. Mm -hmm. So we started like that, uh, December 1st, 1982. Mm -hmm. So we were conducting only the outpatient there. Uh, all people, even rich or poor, they can come, but mostly people were coming, nearly 100 to 150 outpatient was coming to that OP. 150 per month? Per day. Per day. Ah, per day. Per day. Per day. Morning 8 o'clock we start, 
and it goes up to two o'clock, three o'clock. And you were the only doctor? I was the only doctor that wow, was assisted to help me. So I examined the case and uh, prescribed the medicines. And the, the most important thing I would like to say is because it is a free charitable trust, we were not going uh, to a low standard trust. We were giving a very high, very good uh, quality medicines. Hey. Let's go. Yeah. So this is our dental care uh, section, where we have all the dental specialties. And even poor people can come and. Uh... Yes. The the card holders are given a, a appointment with the dentist. But, uh, how you decide that uh, this uh, particular person they need to be served for free? We have a system where our trusted staffs go to each house and verify if they are really poor and uh, if they are identified as really poor they are given a yellow card uh -huh. which means everything is free for them yeah, right okay. from uh, uh, right from consultation admission lab test medication even admission even everything is free for them Or a low card, this is given to poor people in the periphery of 10 to 15 kilometers because we can't go wide because you know we have to look after our uh, uh, you know, capacity also. Yeah, capacity also. Uh, we had all these uh, full fledged gynecology department, surgery department, and awfully for some, some 10 years. Mm -hmm. Before we have a cardiology department, we have a cath lab, we are doing angioplasties, uh, we are doing dialysis. And, uh, and also, suppose this poor family has got some, some lady who is pregnant, she is going to deliver. We give a card, which is only for that delivery. Mm -hmm. After that, this is invalid. So only I, for the delivery. If I'm pregnant, I can come. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, then you can avail this facility. And after the delivery, this is, this is not this. This is not this. <laughs> Only your family supports this hospital or any other entrepreneurs? Yeah, basically it's our own uh, family and our own uh, companies which support the hospital. But sometimes, once in a blue moon, somebody wants to really contribute something to us, then we say okay. But that sometimes, only <laughs> very rarely. And here we have the uh, medicine uh, pharmacy where we have uh, some generic medicines also. Uh, try to promote uh, generic medicines as they are uh -huh. uh, uh, way cheaper than the other medicines and a lot of people get benefit out of it. So here we are at the, another charity project of the Raja Group. That's a school for kids, and here we meet with the principal. Hi, hearty welcome. So, what was the main idea or intention behind uh, building schools or kindergarten? Yeah, the idea was, you know, started by my brother, who is uh, Mr. Abdul Rahman. He passed away about uh, eight months back. Uh, we started the school in the year 1993. And the main intention was to give, uh, you know, good schooling for the locals here at a reasonable price. So the price is very reasonable. So it is not, it is not uh, you know, purely uh, business oriented, but a reasonably priced uh, school. So but does it have profits? No, it doesn't make profits. Or if there are any profits, we utilize on the buildings and structures and things like that. Uh, it's not, not, not for profit school. Not for profit, not for profit. But at the same time, we charge. Yeah, yeah. To run the school, we yeah, charge. Yeah, salary, yeah, yeah, maintenance. Yeah, maintenance and all that. 
We have got close to around 2,000 children here and about 150 teachers and staffs and everybody. Do you report your child's here? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Многие здесь школьники, выпускники университетов, они мечтают а, стать госслужащим, работать а, в медицинском центре государственном, в государственной компании там, по сельскому хозяйству. То есть здесь многие жители хотят работать на государство, государственные служащие, полицейские, доктора, они получают максимальную зарплату. Многие мечтают получить хорошее образование и уехать из страны. И мне кажется, что это похоже на Россию 90-х. Когда оказалось в России, что будущее за Европой, за Америкой, все пытались уехать. И потом они пропустили рост страны, когда он начался в 2000-х годах. И мне кажется, что индусы сейчас тоже недопонимают, что сейчас у них экономика очень сильно растет. И те, кто остается в стране, и те, кто инвестирует в себя здесь, в стране, через 10-20 лет будут здесь крутыми ребятами. Мы приехали в еще один благотворительный проект Раджа Групп, это дом престарелых. То есть очень прикольно, что у братьев дома рядышком находятся, и там рядышком госпиталь, дом престарелых. Чайная компания. Это, ну, прикольно. Все, видимо, была большая земля, и они ее разделили где-то производство, где-то свои дома, а где-то благотворительный проект. Тяжело получить лицензию на то, чтобы сделать дом престарелых. Хотя вот такое вот благое дело, благое да? дело. чтобы сделать благое дело, нужна лицензия, и это сложно. Азима, член семьи, привел нас в еще один благотворительный проект, это психиатрическая клиника, где людей лечат с витальными расстройствами. И здесь 50 человек, которых адаптируют к нормальной жизни. Такие материалы, они учат, как дети снова живут, как цвета. Мы сейчас прошли мимо их, их родителей, и ну, сложно отличить, что они ментально не, не, не приспособлены. И потом они после того, как их полечили, они отправляют нормальную жизнь, дают какую-то работу. Да, даже их пристраивают, это интересно, что, например, что чтобы они вылечились, нужно социально адаптироваться, показать им, что они востребованы, нужны общество, приносят пользу. Это важно для поздравления, и вот ребята этим тоже занимаются. Люди с ментальными расстройствами обучаются здесь, восстанавливаются и делают такие штуки, которыми они потом учатся зарабатывать себе на жизнь. То есть они производят такие подделки, продают и тем самым получают денежки. So we continue our meeting with Abdul Rafik. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you have so many businesses, so we are not able to uh, visit each of you as uh, it's as ra as they are in uh, remote uh, areas. Yeah. Uh, even even without roads. Uh, so could you tell us and describe and maybe show some video websites of uh, your businesses? Like for example, you have uh, activated carbon. You have. Uh, Uh, Coco pit, that coco. soil substitute. Uh -huh. you, you produce a uh, body for buses. Yeah. And also you could produce uh, balms. Uh, balms and balms. which you sell uh, over oh, the world. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start from the balm. Yeah. Okay, I'll just explain to you about the balm business, actually. Uh, it started about uh, 15 years back, uh, we started the balm industry. Actually, India has got a huge market for balms and we have all, uh, you know, uh, uh, local manufacturers, uh, the Indian manufacturers in a big way. And uh, that is how we thought we'll get into it. And uh, now uh, we produce a good uh, quantity of balms. Uh, we have got uh, Kaja balm, Kaja oil and some creams and uh, sprays for, you know, sprains in the leg and all that kind of things. Uh, we've got a fully, you know, modernized uh, factory uh, for the same. Uh -huh. And uh, that is how we're doing the balm. Uh, you now you can see all these uh, different varieties of balms we uh, have. from yeah. the headache. Headache, cold, oh. body ache, ache. muscular pain. Uh -huh. Now recently one of the, you know, major uh, magazines of India uh, made a 
you know, report of all the bombs in India. Uh -huh. And uh, they have taken the bombs random from different shops and, you know, made a study on it. And uh, they have found that, you know, Kaja bomb is the best bomb. Best bomb. Yeah, we fall in the first uh, category of the bombs. Uh, saying that uh, the quality is good and things like and that. And it was difficult to enter other countries, so you sell in uh, Thailand? Yeah, now we are, we, are, we are planning to sell in Thailand, um, you know, all the other neighboring countries, because ah. they are also Asian countries, people use a lot of bombs. Yeah, yeah. Is this hard to enter other countries? No, it's, uh, it's not very difficult, but, uh, you know, in a way, yeah, there are a lot of uh, hurdles to get across it, but uh, we are on to it now. We are on to it. Nice. Because we are in par with the quality of the other uh, manufacturers abroad. Uh -huh. We have the confidence uh, that uh, we are of good quality. So there is, I don't think there will be an issue. What about uh, uh, business about activated carbon? Activated how do you start yeah, it? Uh, yeah, the activated carbon. I'll just uh, start you. How, I'll just tell you how we started it. Initially, we started with the coco pit. Coco pit is nothing but a soil substitute. Uh -huh. See, it's like uh, now uh, the earth is being used for growing plants and all that. Instead of that, now we have found something. It's called a soil substitute. Uh -huh. So you don't require, um, you know. Uh, the earth, uh -huh. the, sub, uh, the soil is good enough. So the, this is the, the skin from uh, coconut. The coconut. This is the, the shell, yeah, and the yeah, shell, yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. the skin you use yeah, for yeah, soil. Yeah. So what they use is the skin normally is used for making ropes. Uh -huh. You know the big rope. Uh -huh, yeah. They wind it and make yeah, the rope. Yeah, yeah. And the waste out of it is called pith. Uh -huh. But now people have started using it for growing plants. Nice. Now, for example, if you go to the Holland, uh, Holland. You can find a lot of uh, greenhouses uh -huh. where they start growing plants in... Uh, this, so before this it was soil. like a west, like a dust? Yeah, yeah, d dust. Uh -huh. Now it is being used. So, nice. you know, it's got a big demand now. The process is uh, very simple and, uh, you know, it's got certain uh, criteria which uh -huh. has to go through. So we have got a nice laboratory and all that. And uh, now it's done in a big way now. Uh -huh. And the land substitution and the uh, bomb uh, as a factory are far from each other or? The bomb, that's totally different. Uh -huh. That's totally different. They are different, right? Like different, locations. totally. But now uh, the cocoa pit and the activated carbon is very connected, uh -huh. well connected. Because, uh, you know, after you remove the husk from the coconut, you find the shell. Uh -huh. The coconut shell, now we are using it for making activated carbon. Uh -huh. The activated carbon is uh, another, uh, uh, you know, uh, another process uh, totally. It has got a kiln and where you, you know, we do the firing to it and we activate it. It's um, um, activated in a kiln actually. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, then we take it out and it's go it goes for uh, um, uh, what um, gold refining, uh -huh. petroleum and water. Water is the most important. Uh -huh. For water, it is being used in a big way. Uh -huh. For filtering? Filtering water. Filtering water. In uh -huh. fact, we have also developed a filter uh, which goes into all the RO machines and all that. Uh, the machines? RO machines. Uh -huh. RO machines. Uh -huh. The reverse osmosis, uh, water plants, you find everywhere in India, every house has got an RO machine. Uh -huh. And inside the RO machine goes this uh, activated uh -huh. carbon filter. And here in Ayurveda, you use uh, your... Uh, yeah, we use here. We yeah, use here. For nice. the Kerala water, you require a very mild, uh, uh, you know, filtration. Uh -huh. Because the water in Kerala is good, actually. Compared to the other states of India, Kerala water is good. So we just need a minimal uh, filtration. That is what we are doing. Uh -huh. What is the biggest market now? United States or...? Yeah, United States is a big market. Mm -hmm. It's a big market. Interesting. In, in fact, even European countries, mm -hmm. everybody requires this because water is a problem now. So if you need uh, pure water, you need activated carbon. Uh -huh. Okay, where, where is this production located? It is uh, in between Madre and Trichy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in between the two cities we are placed actually. And it's the belt for coconut. It's a coconut belt uh -huh. where you get enough and more uh, coconut shells and cocoa pit. Have uh, bus body production? Yeah, bus body production is a different uh, activity totally. Uh -huh. But again, we have one small unit here, and the other one is in Belgaum. Uh -huh. 
-huh. And uh, we supply to a big manufacturer called uh, Tata Marco Polo. Uh -huh. uh, they make buses. Uh, Marco Polo is a Brazilian company, uh -huh. actually. We make the front show, the rear show, the dashboards and all that. Uh -huh. uh, you know, and uh, we send, uh, we make about uh, two tons of uh, parts per day. And I heard you had a meeting with Belarusians. Yeah, yeah, that is what uh, now our latest, uh, you know, thing is that we are planning to so get into maybe Russia. Maybe uh, some Russian and Belarusian buses yeah, will yeah, uh, yeah. be with your bodies. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so interesting. When did you start this business? This is about, uh, only about uh, five years old. Five years, five old. years old. So, so uh, how, you did, uh, how did you come up with this idea? Uh, no, actually we had a factory there for making roofing tiles. Uh -huh. That is, clay roofing tiles. Uh -huh. Ah, a long time ago. Yeah, a long time Even ago. Even your father's time. Yes, yes, yes. That's about uh, 35 years old. The building uh -huh. was very old and things were... So you you renovated it. We renovated the whole thing. And then we came across this business because uh -huh. Tata Marco Polo. So that is how we started. Now yeah. we are also planning to get into the bus seat industry where we manufacture the bus seats. Ah, seats. I think in about uh, in a year's time we'll be launching that also. Uh -huh. uh, nice. A bus requires a lot of seats. So, you know, we plan to intend to do that also. Uh -huh. Now you have a big uh, production of food. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Like snacks, even yeah, snacks. Yeah, snack yeah, I eat here, yeah, I love yeah, them yeah, very much. Yeah, with yeah, kunjut. Yeah. So uh, there, uh, you know, we have uh, different varieties of uh, uh, sweets and, uh, you know, Uh, fruit juices and all that. Uh -huh. But uh, I'll just explain to you about uh, which is interesting. That's the semia. Semia is something uh, similar to noodles. Black noodles. Uh, yeah, we have black noodles, and uh, it's uh, manufactured in a different way. It's all hand uh, labor-oriented uh -huh. uh, manufacturing process. It's not like a mechanized, uh -huh. uh, you know. Uh, yeah, as your philosophy is yeah, giving yeah, uh, yeah. Wor work, work also. That uh -huh. is also there. Мы окунулись в культуру Индии, пытались понять этих людей. Мы вокруг, видите, много трэша, грязи, мусора, воняет, люди странные, бедно одетые. А на самом деле это одна из самых богатых стран в мире. По реальному ВВП это страна номер три после Соединенных Штатов, на первом месте Китай. А по номинальному ВВП это страна на шестом месте. А, но из-за того, что здесь перенаселение, у них миллиард двести человек населения, а, доход на душу населения, он, естественно, низкий. А, при этом у страны огромный потенциал, потому что они только сейчас выбираются из ямы, они а, только сейчас люди получают доступ к образованию, к школам, к университетам, и за этой страной будущее, поэтому нужно следить, наблюдать и думать, как вы можете поучаствовать в росте этой страны. Yeah, no, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so amazed. Nice yeah. Impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.